What's going on hybrid shooters? It's Jason Vong. Got a ton of requests from you guys asking for more wedding film content. So I'm very excited to be sharing with you guys a lot of the information in the next coming weeks. So in conjunction to the wedding film tutorials that I'll be producing, I figure I'll also showcase some of the weddings that we've shot and offer a behind the scenes commentary on them. Whether it be the particular gear that we use, the editing style and choice, maybe even the music, you know, anything that's particularly that stands out from this wedding that I want to share with you guys that I think you guys can really benefit from. For this week's video, we're going to be focusing on the importance of storytelling and editing and how we got this particular wedding gig. So first, we're going to watch Catherine and Phillip's wedding film. Uh, you can find that link in the description box below. Go ahead, watch that, and then come back to enjoy this BTS commentary. All right, just so we can get this out of the way, what picture profile did we use? What LUT did we use? We use Picture Profile 1, the default movie profile that you can find on any Sony Alpha cameras. And the LUT that we use is from the James Miller D LUTs collection. He recently published a new set called Overlook, and these work great with your standard Rec. 709 footage. That means you don't have to shoot in S Log 3 or S Log 2 or Cine 4 to use these LUTs. Uh, these LUTs are intended to be used on Rec. 709 footage. So I'll definitely talk about color grading in a near future video. There's actually a different different LUT that we've been using that we really enjoy, but I want to use it a few more times first before making a video about it. So hang on tight. So let's go ahead and talk about how we like to edit our wedding films. Now, I personally love the story driven ones. So this is probably hands down my favorite wedding of the year. Probably one of my better wedding films, to be honest with you, just because of the story alone. So my partner and I sat down with a couple maybe three or four months prior before we shot their wedding. Again, their wedding is uh, was back in February, so we might have met with them October of November the year before. Anyways, when we sat down with them, we told them the best wedding films are the one with a really, really good story. So we told them the way that we like to edit our wedding films is more than just a montage of their day overlaid with music. You know, we really want their voice in it. So we told them um, they can either either do a letter reading to each other, which is pretty standard, or custom vows. But actually, it turns out their friends and family had some of the best speeches that I ever heard at weddings. So as you saw from the video, the officiant and their friends narrated their love story. I just took bits and pieces of what they said during the toast, during the ceremony, and just paired it up with visuals that matches their point. In my opinion, when you have a lot of good voiceovers to use, even if you have a background music that's kind of like, eh, the viewers will be more focused on the story and the visuals that are happening rather than the background music. The background music is just kind of there to make it not sound so empty, if that makes any sense. Luckily, the music worked out really well and I timed all of the emotional punchlines right before the music swelled up, especially when the couple's brothers were giving their heartfelt speech. Just, ugh, it just worked out so well. So my advice is to always meet up with a couple beforehand. That should be standard anyways, but that's where you can also be connecting with them at a more personal level. You can set expectations on what you're looking for and what you're gonna be delivering for the wedding film. And you can also see what they're looking for as well. They can tell you what they're looking for at their weddings so that you can make sure that you capture it and include it in their highlight film. So pretty much just make sure everybody is on the same page. If you want letter readings, make sure you ask for it. Don't just assume because most couples that we've met up weren't planning on doing letter reading until we asked for it so if that is the pinnacle of your wedding film make sure you ask for the letter reading by the way we got the music from musicbed.com it was our primary go-to music source for our wedding films all of last year this year we're starting to use music from artlist.io they also have a great selection of music for your wedding films as well. And if you use my link down below and sign up, you get two bonus months for free. You can also preview the tracks before committing to a membership. So use my link to start browsing. And if you do sign up with my link, it directly supports this channel for me to keep on pumping more wedding film content for you guys. 
All right, so for the last topic of this video, I wanna talk about how we got the gig, just because this week we're a little bit more focused on how to get your first wedding gig and what you should do in preparation to get your first wedding gig or how to get more future wedding gigs in the future. So <laughs> honestly, it was word of mouth and that's the best kind of advertisement for any business, really. We didn't do any sort of paid Facebook ad or paid advertisements in general. So a mutual friend of ours, a, few, a mutual friend of me and the bride, uh, tagged me in a post that the bride made because she was looking for photographers and videographers. And without thinking twice, I just threw our company's website onto the post. And there were like a dozen others before us already. So I was thinking, nah, she probably wouldn't hit us up. But they did, they hit us up while we were shooting a wedding up in the Bay Area. She emailed us and told us she watched all of our wedding films and she loved it so much that she wants to book us. And that's the best kind of client that you can ever ask for, people who really appreciate your work. And she didn't even bargain with us on our price. She booked us, I think she booked our highest package, which was awesome. So going back to something that I said earlier this week, uh, I mentioned be super active on social media, always be posting your work because you never know when your next lead is going to come from. And when you do, you'll be glad that you did. In the next wedding, which I'll probably post next week, I'll cover a different set of topics. So let me know in the comments down below what you want me to talk about. Guys, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in tomorrow's video. Peace.